Hello, I'm Dean Karstens, and this is Dean's N-Scale Trains. Today I'm going to be talking about switches or turnouts and switch controllers or turnout controllers. There is some confusion on nomenclature. Railroad workers in North America call this a switch. Model railroaders in America call it a turnout. The rest of the world, particularly Britain, calls it a point. Further, Atlas calls their product a switch. Everybody else calls it a turnout. I'm just going to continue calling it a switch. Here is my track diagram with the six switches labeled. With the Atlas switch or turnout, you have a number of choices for controllers. You can use the original one, which is a manual one that comes with the machine, with the switch. You can convert to their remote one, which has a couple of solenoids in here that work electrically through the wires. Or I'm gradually switching to this. I like this version. It's the HON under table switch machine. And it looks like this. It's a little bit more robust than their standard remote. Here's a photo and a diagram of the Atlas switch controller. The power leads come into the top two electrical connections and lead out from the bottom two to other controllers wired in series. Power leads to the sw switch go to the three connections on the side, black wire in the middle, red and green wires in the others. You may need to interchange these two to get the correct direction for the switch. This is an Atlas Snap Switch controller. To use it, you move it in the direction you want the switch to go and push the button. Move it and push. The instructions say don't push for longer than one second. The problem is this solenoid, or this double um, solenoid coil, um, which activate the switch. As you can see, they have very, very fine wires and it's easy to burn these out. So that's why they say, push it for only a second. The Bachmann machine is controlled with this controller. You don't have to push a button, you just slide it in the correct position and it generates the pulse to throw the switch. I wish they sold this separately, but they don't. So we're stuck with this. To connect the switches, I use telephone cord and telephone connectors using these uh, connector thingies. To strip the wire, I take a very sharp razor blade and carefully cut it. About an inch and a half long. This is the part that's gonna to go to the switch. There's And do this on a safe surface. If you do this right, you get rid of the insulation and also tin the, tin the leads.
connect the yellow and the black. A little messy but it's the only way I've figured out where I don't cut the, the wire insulation down below. This is a handy tool for stripping and clipping telephone cable crimping the um, phone connectors to the end of the cable. I got this from Radio Shack years ago. You can get a more robust one from Amazon right now. I mounted the four Atlas controllers on a piece of masonite. The masonite has been drilled out to fit the um, three gang box that I use it hold it as described later you can see the power leads coming in the green and the red coming to each controller here's the back of my control panel the two power leads from the control controllers terminate at this terminal block the red and the green leads. Later I will connect in the wires from the 18 volt power supply to tie into these. For where we have only one switch on each of the controllers, we use this sort of a connector just plug it in, find the appropriate connector here, plug it in. Where we have two switches connected to the same switch controller, we use this splitter thing. One wire goes in, two come out. So that's one and two. Here's one and two. It goes in there. And so on. So that's it for this video. The next one will deal with surround supports and tunnel portals and bridges. Until then, thanks for watching.